All right, so first and foremost, I don't have my mics. I'm not prepared to do content, but I am prepared to do content at the same time. So we are all here in Southwest at Clark Park. I brought my son down to the park before his um, psychiatric evaluation at the Children's Center. Um, this has been a long time coming. My son is eight, about to go to the third grade this year. Um, I've been having problems with Blake's like behavior and things of that nature since he was in kindergarten. Um, unfortunately, Blake does not have a father like so many other black and brown boys and girls. Um, anytime I try to communicate with my son's father about like the issues I'm having with him, as far as like his mental health is concerned and his behavioral issues, it always leads to nothing. So um, for me, I just feel like as a mom, a single mom at that, it's been like very hard trying to navigate the school in Mary Grove. Um, has done everything but tell me my baby is a child of God and um, a black boy that deserves to be there. So due to just like constant pushback and the powers that be and my, you know, exhaustion with being a single mother and all the antics that go with the administration, the DPSCD, I decided to homeschool all three of my children this year. Um, I do feel that behavioral issues and DPSCD are often neglected, undetected. They'll tell you all these things wrong with your child and all of these things that you should be doing, but the truth is post-pandemic, the mental health space is super negligent. Um, I do believe that unfortunately, Blake slipped through the cracks and I'm an active parent. So um, I do want to take people through this journey with me and him. And it's like the psyche valve is, we are three, it's like three years. We waited um, for this. My child has seen, I think maybe six different therapists over the last three years. I mean, anybody who goes to therapy knows that that's not regular. Yeah. Um, can I see the court from here? Yeah, that's cool. But for the most part, um, having six therapists within a three year time span, that's ridiculous. And when I say six, that's like six that he consistently saw three or more times because that's the like disparity the mental health space is in. Like three or more times is a regular patient out with any real therapist to tell you that that's really not the case. Um, so this year for the first time um, in his life, we've been able to consistently see a black female therapist, which I was against at first. Um, we're getting my son's therapy. I'm always an advocate for people that look like them. Representation does matter. Society will tell you it don't, but representation really does matter, especially when you talk about black boys. Black boys need to see black men doing things that they wish, hope, and dream they can do in the future. I'm really adamant about that as being a single uh, black boy mom. So for me, um, a female therapist was not at the top of my list, especially for Blake and all the issues he was having. Um, but his therapist this year has been consistently his therapist for the last eight months. And when I say, um, it's been a journey. It has not been easy. And we still have a long way to go. But I feel like this is the most comfortable me and him have been in the mental health space. And that says a lot. Um, she has fought for my baby. She has fought for me. Um, she's shown me what community could look like in a mental health space. And I appreciate that because for so long, I was an angry mother for so long. I was just a frustrated mother for so long. I was just pissed off because I'm like the average mother, the average person, the average parent anywhere that's working a nine to five and it didn't have the flexibility like me would have not probably been able to secure and obtain mental health resources for their child after all of the loops and hopes that we went through. And I just want to share light on that today because I feel like I'm so happy about this psyche vow because we've been here for so long and we haven't got the help or assistance 
or resources we've needed. And I just think that it's, it's sad that I'm just happy that we finally are at a breakthrough point in his mental health journey. And I just, I often wonder and think about, like, if he wasn't a black boy, like, would he have had more resources? If he wasn't raised in a single parent home, would he have gotten help sooner? So, yeah, I just say that to say, like, when you see single parents or single mothers, especially black single mothers, we are often disrespected, neglected, not taken seriously. Just have some grace. Um, I'm learning to, you know, go where we're celebrated, not tolerated. So before I was, like, really trying to build community within other communal spaces and for so long, that just didn't happen for me and my children. Um, so now when you see us out in the community and affiliated with these orgs, just know they show up, they show out, and most importantly, they never let me or be fostered down. And I think that's important. Um, go where you celebrate it, not tolerate it. For so long, I had so much pushback. I'm like, oh no, the school at Mary Grove, it is one of the best schools in DPSCD. It's not. And for so long, I fought for what I thought I wanted. And I'm like, I don't want pipeline to prison education to be a part of my kids' lives. Um, I'm not trying to encourage y'all to do homeschool because I haven't even started that journey yet. And I think it's going to be every bit of ghetto, just like every other part of me and my children's lives. But I do just want um, moms especially to see this. Keep going. The world will try to tell you you're not enough. The world will try to tell you you and your kids are not in the right places and spaces. And that's okay. Find your people. It took me a while, but I found my people. I show up for my people. They show up for me. And I can honestly say I'm in a much better space. I feel like we can only go up from here. So, yeah, I just wanted to give y'all my little think tank on that.